So welcome back. We're just going to give you a little insight into uh, some of our private sessions of how we talk and communicate with each other and come up with a little ideas, brainstorming, if you will, for some of our topics for either our church service that we have out here or some of our podcasts in here. So I just wanted to bring you in and uh, see how the process works a little bit. Well, if you're watching from right now, you'll notice we, uh, we're we in the same clothes that we had on from the latter or the wrapping up of the Genesis recap where we had poured ourselves a fresh glass of wine from our good friends in Italy that sent it to us. So uh, cheers to you guys once again. We love y'all. And uh, this is where we either here or in uh, the study uh, that we bounce uh, ideas and thoughts and questions on, on things that we're confused about or things that we I think that may have a good message. Why is it necessary for God to pick out one group as they're the chosen ones versus all the rest of the people? Why, why would it be just all people are important? The Egyptians are equally as important as the Canaanites or the whatever. I mean, just See, pick, argue, pick one. I would argue the opposite side of that, to be completely honest. If I was the benevolent ruler, God, I would go with the strongest and the most fit society. I would have went with Egypt. And it seems kind of strange to me that the chosen people are coming from an unknown land of Canaan. It's basically a bunch of podunk farmers instead of the elite power in the world, the Egyptians. Or maybe uh, it could be like modern day... Uh, United States where you look at D.C. and you go, eh, but I really want to choose D.C. over uh, Middle America. That uh, is true. D.C. seems like a... Yeah, or, or, or Rome. Or, or any time, Rome. But... Well, I don't know what you're talking about with Rome. I think you're completely wrong there. I think I would have lived in Rome at any point in history above D.C. But, for, you know, for, yeah, that's 100%. You know, right. I don't... So I don't know what you're saying there. You're going to drive me to drinking. Yeah, God, I don't love Italian wine. But what I do think is uh, striking, though, is, is why. And why is it necessary? Why is it necessary to pick and choose all these different, uh, some people call them prophets or whatever you want, whatever label you want to put on these special people that uh, walk with God? Uh, why would not everyone have that relationship? Is God creating uh, different levels of people? Uh, it, it, what what it tells me is maybe a lot of these other things that uh, we study uh, about the frequencies of man, maybe certain people on purpose are in tune to different, different ideas and different uh, frequencies of the ether that we really can't explain yet in scientific terms, but if we're getting there, then... Uh, because I equate it to us, you know, this is not something new or fresh to me. It is just something that I relate to is that the human body is our own personal temple. And it is very much like a uh, TV or radio antenna with our pineal gland, just like the Indians. And this is our third eye in there. And, you know, we receive information into this and into who we are. And maybe through meditation, maybe through various forms of prayer, just like in water, changes its molecular structure with good intent. doesn't matter what religion, just that good intent and prayer and thanks to having good water changes the molecular structure of water. That is a physical, scientific, proven fact. That's what happens. So it just, it just begs the question, is it really necessary to create a book of uh, propaganda to say one people is above another. It's almost like you're begging for conflict. You're begging to have problems. You're begging to create strife and suppression and racism. And all. you're begging for it with these type of uh, these type of things that are put in the Bible. Well, I think with some of our commentary from what we just shot or maybe y'all will see that I think there is a good propaganda story going on there that 
it's hard to put into words and make it short, but the Bible is written by man for man. We say it's God's word to God's people, but I don't think that's the full truth. I think it's man's word for men and used as a controlling mechanism. And we've seen it used as a controlling mechanism all throughout the course of history. I like to think of Napoleon's quote on religion that it's a great tool for controlling the masses. And he used it that way and so have so many rulers throughout history. But back to your point of why Israel and why these certain group of people, I mean, somebody had to step up and be a leader. Anarchy can't exist. We think of anarchy as something that's either a good or a bad thing, but it's just another word for freedom. We can't have people being truly free. There has to be a leader. Most people are sheep. So when we talk about prophets and why are they speaking to these people, well, there is an omnipotent God. He would know that the numbers would work, that you have to have more than one person. Because some people that say they're God or say they heard the word of God, they're not going to be believed. They're going to be discounted. So you have to work the numbers in your favor. And you're going to have a couple people step up and become recognized and become those followed people. They're going to be those leaders. So I think that Israel, being the state that it is, and people wanting to go with that route, if you want to use that, it had to be somebody. In our quest for spiritual knowledge and, and a betterment of ourselves and to become better men every day. The, the Bible is the last place that I would personally turn to look for any sort of salvation, if you will. I'm very much more, I mean, my, and as you get to know us and come to the church and, and visit with us, the, the infinite is not only out here, the infinite is inside us. And until we can conquer our own, our own passions, our own, uh, our own anxieties, until we can be the masters of ourselves, we, uh, we can't really master anything else. And everything begins inside here. Just when you, you know, I, I look at uh, Gandhi, who, you know, is a lawyer and being suppressed. And, you know, he just turned into himself and found peace uh, inside and portrayed that peace that made such an impact into the world. And I think you can look the same way to uh, Malcolm X, who I think in, you know, every, from, his, from his life until now, uh, is totally misunderstood because he was, you know, at, at whatever means necessary and then became uh, much more, he, he started looking deep inside himself and not just on the outside structure of everything. And you can see that in so many people. And I think, and that's what we promote here is, is we, we have to learn ourselves. We have to learn how to be better to ourselves before we can uh, be better to each other. And, and I, I have a difficult time finding that in, in the scripture of the Old and New Testament so much as uh, a lot of the Eastern philosophies that uh, you know, we subscribe to. I think we can go back to the adage that your body is your temple. And with it being your temple, I like to go to a quote kind of from Sir Conan Doyle in Sherlock Holmes. And he states that your mind is an addict. Now, do you want to have a cluttered and attic where you can't find anything? Or do you want to have it appointed with well-appointed furnishings? Now, what we're doing is trying to appoint it with this book, the Bible, and many of the other Eastern philosophies, Western philosophies. And we're trying to piece the whole thing together. We're trying to fill our own personal temple with as much knowledge and well-appointed goods as we can to make our own good, reasonable decisions about life and what comes after. That was well said, Mr. Schmidt. Well said. Well, well said. Uh, you're exactly right. Uh, our minds have to be organized in such a way that it, it makes sense to us individually and 
you cannot make sense of of your own religious beliefs unless you know very well and understand the other ones. Oh, yes, you have to know, just like in any warfare, you have to know thy enemy to conquer thy enemy. Right, and I'm definitely not saying that I believe the New and Old Testament are my enemies, but I'm not saying that by any means, nor do no, I... No, 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 we're not taking it as that. I'm just... But that's a, that's a good analogy. It's you, you have to understand what is around you and what influences your life, right? You cannot live in the United States and not be influenced by the Old and New Testament. It's just a part of this nation. And if what the nation was founded on. Yeah, and if you are... You know, partly, yeah, but if you are a part of this country, it behooves you to read and study and understand the, the New and Old Testament. Just as much as it would be if we were born and lived in the Middle East, we would want to know the Quran inside and out. Which we will get to the Quran after we finish the Bible and some of our other things. We will get in depth of the Quran. Yeah, not, yeah and all of Eastern philosophies that which actually both of us have already read the Quran, but we'll go back and read it for the benefit of. Well, I, I'm gonna, we made a pact this year, especially since uh, this whole Corona thing really uh, disrupted our whole goal of, of really starting our church earlier this year to, to really, <laughs> for us just to have fun getting to know people and, and, uh, and sharing ideas and what we believe is life, the meaning of life. How do we see God? What is God? What is, uh, what is the meaning of all of it? You know, we're gonna, that was our intention earlier this year, then uh, we were unable to even begin to have a congregation. So we thought it was a good idea to take what we normally do like this, just talk back and forth and just uh, have it recorded and then we thought well what even a better idea uh, we're going to read and study all these and study groups that we plan to do here at the church anyway why don't i just read every verse of every book over time you know over maybe it'll take us uh, two years maybe to go through the new and old testament the quran the uh, uh sorry i'm drawing a blank Bible by Vita, and, <laughs> That's a and, tough uh, one. Yeah, and, and all the rest of them. There, there's quite a few uh, religious texts from around the world that, that we're going to delve into, and we're going to read every one of them. So if y'all want to join us in that endeavor, I, I welcome it. Uh, it's just like what Trey said, I think, in the last video. It's just me, and sometimes Trey. Trey's getting better at reading uh, out loud. And we're just going to explore it together, have some light commentary, on each thing we read sometimes no commentary it's just self-explanatory like i'm really anxious to get into psalms and proverbs those are great i mean there's just a lot of wonderful wisdom in psalms and proverbs that's just fun see i'm excited about leviticus to be honest with you <laughs> i mean i'm pretty excited about it you know all of it really is exciting and it's good to know it's just it's like you said having an organized attic or just a really organized tool room when you yeah. walk in, you're looking for a tool, you want to know where to go get it. And, you know, bam. And if you haven't read it, like when I sit around and talk with diehard believers in some of this stuff, uh, I find it striking that they they just don't even know. that Like they haven't even read it themselves. They just go on blind faith of stories they learned in Sunday school and uh, have no idea what it says. That has been my huge upset with the most Christians, especially where we live. I think that's one of the big decisions of why we decided to start our own church is because most people don't know what they believe. They were told what they believe and they were force fed it from the time they could barely walk and they've never read or delved into anything for themselves. So I thought, and you thought, that there was a need for groups and people like us that want to explore and want to have a deeper understanding of all things. Well, you're right. It's To me, forming uh, this church was and is a meeting of the minds that has almost like a spiritual theological society where we come together and it, and some people are, are better at meditation. Some people can help us 
better meditate and look inside. Some people can help us with uh, all the extra books and evidences uh, around the New and Old Testament to help put that picture together better for us. And what a lot of people don't see is we have had meditation sessions at the farm where we have spent the entire day going deep inside ourselves and exploring the art of meditation and what's around us. And we've had Old Testament scholars here, New Testament scholars here. We've had different religions here. We've even had, I mean, several even uh, famous people grace us at the farm and just shared thoughts and bounces off, whether it was in our study or in the study or here. And there's a lot of things that people don't see here, but they are more than welcome to come to the church and see it. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And we are, <laughs> I laugh, but we, because of the way I believe this country is, uh, very litigious, that all these, whether you believe this, uh, this pandemic to be real or imagined or somewhere in between and all the rules that affect social gatherings and uh, restrictions and all the freedoms lost uh, by having people back uh, it, it may still even be a little different everywhere because it's just most unfortunate but luckily we have the, the space to make everybody feel safe, whatever your belief is, that it's uh, real or imagined or whatever. You can wear a mask here or not wear a mask. You know, we're, that's your total freedom. Because if there is one thing we definitely believe in, it is individual freedom. Yeah, that is one thing that is promoted here in a grand scale, is that we are responsible for ourselves. And and the people that have taken care of themselves and, and respect themselves enough to do that, uh, I don't believe it's so much as an obligation to our fellow man as so much as uh, I think it's an innate and inherent need that when you see someone else genuinely struggling to do and be better, but life just keeps throwing them a million curveballs that keeps them knocking them down. When you have the ability to help those people that want to pull themselves up, well, you know, that's, that's what we do. We want to help them out. Uh, people that want to uh, free ride and, uh, and everything for nothing. Well, I guess we can subscribe to what uh, God's philosophy was. Just, and just forget those people. But if God would just wipe them out according to Genesis, it's kind of insane. But uh, it is what it is. Well, again, thank you for joining Kevin and I here in the radio podcast room. And we hope you all join us on Sundays. Thank you all very much. Hit subscribe and like if you like this information and content. Have a good day. Hey, one thing that is important, guys, that uh, we're quite aware of how YouTube censorship is, is growing and knocking a lot of great content off. So if you want to find us uh, in other ways, uh, we are on BitChute. That's BitChute.com and Library.com, but it's... Uh, it's library, not spelled out library. It's uh, Better we'll put the link in the description bar. Oh, fantastic. Look at my genius brother. He is unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. And any topics that y'all like us to discuss uh, as we delve into it, because our channels are, are new and we, are, we have so many things that we want to discuss. It could take us 500 to 5,000 of these shows to get into every single specific uh, detail but if there's anything specific that you'd like to talk about whether it's uh, reincarnation quantum physics uh rupert Sher uh, sheldrake's uh, morphic residence or uh, any of these uh shami religions or talking from ayahuasca to you know whatever whatever it is that you can think of that you would like us to talk about we certainly are open to the idea and best to to address it because we do touch and study so many things that we have uh, that's why my hair is turning white so please please uh please join our conversation